I'm going to talk about the most relevant topic these days, transformers, and specifically vision transformers for image recognition classification. So why transformers? They're the most generalizable model out there. They're highly over-parameterized. They use giant data sets. They were introduced in 2017 by Google. They're most used for NLP and language models, such as OpenAI's GPTs, uh, which are all the rage, and Google's BERT, which as of recently processes every English language uh, Google search query. So transformers are often benchmarked against RNNs, specifically LSTMs when used in, in language models specifically. So LSTMs traditionally rely on hidden states to pass information along sequentially during the encoding and then decoding of each word token in the natural language. But RNNs typically fall short learning long range dependencies. And this is where transformers come in. Transformers use something called the attention mechanism, which we'll explain in detail, to weigh the influence of different parts of the input. And the seminal paper written is called Attention is All You Need. Attention is a mechanism where the decoder can go back and look at particular parts of the input, unlike RNNs. So close attention is paid to certain steps of the encoding process, like certain keywords in a sentence or certain objects and image blocks, which we'll demonstrate. So in effect, the decoder outputs keys, which is a vector at each step. So keys index the hidden states, and we'll explain more intuition about the keys. It also uses a softmax architecture, which we'll also explain to normalize and map the potential output classes to a probability distribution. And positional encoding is achieved in very neat ways, but it's also necessary because the transformer does know where the data is coming from. So usually achieved with uh, trig functions. So perhaps imagine like a, a sentence or, or an image can be represented by the various periods of a sine wave so that the exact location of each token would be unique. And to formulate the sets of parallel attention layers at each token are called multi-head attention in order to vary what to pay attention to, perhaps verbs in a sentence or uh, nouns in a sentence or different objects in an image. So the multi-head attention is uh, composed of those key value pair vectors coming from the encoding part of the source, source being a sentence or an image. So that is the input embedding and queries, also vectors from the output embedding. That is the encoding part of the target sentence or image. So in its full formulation, attention is a function of queries, keys, and values. So all these vectors, which we've labeled capital Q, K, and V. And it equals the dot product of the keys and queries, respectively, soft max over the square root of dimensions, and then multiplied by the values. So as far as intuition goes, values are what is most interesting in the source. So what are the keywords in the sentence or objects in the image? Keys are the indexes that address those values, uh, much like a dictionary data structure. So each key has an associated value, basically. And uh, queries, queries are built by the encoder of the target sentence or image and prompt the network to find certain information, basically what we'll compare to. And we'll give some intuition when we explain the dot product and the softmax. So the overall dynamic, basically what you need to get out of this is that a query is pegged against a key to locate a certain value. So the dot product of the keys and queries yields an angle between both vectors to measure how similarly aligned they are. In high dimensions, most vectors will be orthonormal, but if the key and query vectors align, they'd have a large dot product, and that would be the key that we're interested in and the corresponding value that we'll be interested in just based off the largest dot product. So each key in space has an associated value, and the query vector is computed with each key, then softmax to select one key and one key only with the highest dot product. So with the softmax, a key will stand out in magnitude versus the rest because a softmax is basically a normalized exponential function. So a sequence of variables is mapped into exponentials and divided by the sum of all the exponentials. So the, the large numbers become almost ones since it's normalized and the small numbers are near zeros, kind of like the maximum function, but differentiable. So a softmax of an inner product of each key with query vector normalizes to a probability distribution over all the values, very similar to using a softmax as the last layer of a neural network to pick the labels in a classification task. And the next seminal paper, which is the main topic today, is uh, an image is 
worth of 16 by 16 words, which is the application of transformers to vision tasks. It was posted for iClary 2021. It is very relevant. So now that we've explained the relevant components of a transformer, we can see how it applies to 2D signals and image matrices for classification. So again, done by a Google team and trained on ImageNet, which will explain how much that costs as, as well. So tokenization for images happens at the pixel level. So each pixel would have to pay attention to each other pixel in the grid, which becomes very expensive. So to resolve that, the image is broken down into blocks of equal size which in, in this paper is 16 by 16, and they're called image patches. So the image patches are then unrolled into a 256 by one one-dimensional sequence, and they're indexed with a positional embedding as well so that the transformer would know which image patch is located where. And then all of that is fed into a standard transformer with the attention mechanism, and finally fed into a feed-forward classifier multi-layer perceptron in this case, which makes the classification prediction and image recognition. So the total number of parameters is on the order of 100 million, the smallest one being 86, and the largest one being 632. Here's an excellent graphic that shows the process of encoding the transformer for vision purposes. So the image is broken down, then flattened, made into a one-dimensional sequence, indexed with the positional embeddings, then goes through the transformer, like attention is all you need, just like a sentence task. And then finally goes into the feed forward network for the final stage of classification. But then finally give out the class and the end result. So something to remember is that the vision transformers are inherently convolutionless, which is very important. Uh, convolutions very much limit generalizability. So vision transformers completely discard the notion of convolutions compared to a ResNet, for instance. Uh, the vision transformer costs 75% less time to train and beats the accuracy on ImageNet itself by 1%, which is a pretty huge accomplishment. Uh, the vision transformer uses approximately 2 to 4x less compute to attain uh, the same performance over five different data sets. C410, C400. And unlike the variable size convolution kernels across different layers, the block size in the image transformer is able to pay attention within a single layer to anywhere on the image. So all connections exist and none are dropped. So convolution neural networks like the, the unit have good inductive priors and can learn any function. However, this promotes locality. That is, in this case, nearing pixels are probably considered more important than ones farther away. And one way to think about vision transformer is a generalization of an MLP, feed forward neural network, which is itself a generalization of a convolutional neural network. The vision transformer also learns very similar to the convolutional neural network. If you pay attention to the filters up top, right? These are principal components and the output looks very similar to what you would see on a typical convolutional neural network. The transformer, unlike the multi-layer perceptron, is permutation invariant and in that it doesn't know where information is coming from unless there are additional learnable sequential positional embeddings. So for instance, like numbering the image patches or the words in a sentence. So for implementation, I use the pre-trained model on ImageNet. So uploading the image of the panda is very well recognized since there's quite a lot of images of pandas. Something else to pay attention to is the attention map. No pun intended. The attention map on the far right compares to the input images and kind of points the eye to where the transformer is looking as well. So the dog and the airplane is uh, is caught really well. The snake, not so much. The back end of this is through cosine similarity. Specifically, if we map out each image patch uh, where it's paying attention to, cosine similarity, again, is a measure of similarity of how aligned vectors are. So the bright white spots would be where a certain object would be on the image and where the transformer would be, would be looking. And another image that I used picked up just fine. So the object is a microphone and the smoke from tobacco was caught as well, really well by the transformer. So that way we know that this is an image that doesn't have a close equivalent in ImageNet. It's just some screenshot that I took from a video on YouTube and processed with the transformer. So we can see yeah, the microphone and the tobacco and the tobacconist as well. The smoke sort of looks like a neck brace, grayish, perhaps I was confused, but the probability is really low anyway. So we can discard that. I just included the, the full output. So as a bonus, transformers as of a couple of weeks ago can be used on GANs as well. 
This is what I consider a, a seminal paper uh, released by UTEC, our own Atlas Wing. So GANs are broadly considered to be the coolest thing in machine learning, probably until transformers really came along. And for those not familiar with GANs, GANs hit two convolutional neural networks usually against each other, where one is called the generator, which generates an image, and one is called the discriminator, which determines how realistic or fake the image is compared to what it's seeing, and then relays feedback to improve the generator after each epoch. Since the overall goal that we explained to be convolutionless becomes to replace the generator and discriminator CNNs in a, in a GAN with transformers. And there's some very competitive results achieved. If you look on your far right, you can see that the trans GAN, which is the transformer GAN by Atlas Wang, was only beat by style GAN, which is one of the most popular GANs out there, generates faces and stuff, and the progressive GAN, but it achieves a very competitive inception score. The IS, it's a GAN measurement for how realistic a, a generated image is. So as Yan Lacun says, uh, GANs are coolest thing in machine learning, but with transformers and transcans, it's a brave new world. And some key takeaways from this project. I just want to point out that a, a 512 core TPU pod costs $384 an hour to run on Google Cloud Platform. I just looked this up. And to commercially train this transformer model, vision transformer, so 2,500 core days means that at 24 hours is about $46,000 to train this particular variety of uh, vision transformer. That's one of several. And I, I kind of tried to see how, how much that would cost if we use uh, Stampede. All of Stampede's capacity on TAC, which is a, about 10K teraflops, it would take about two minutes, according to my calculation. Stampede is a top 25 supercomputer. So there is PyTorch and Keras implementations to this, uh, which is uh, what I used in my project. Feel free to grab it from my GitHub. It's at clement slice vit test. You just need to pip install the pre-trained PyTorch version. There's plenty of future applications that, that are envisioned. I think the transgen kind of opens a whole world, um, but some that I can think of and very interested in are video compression and codecs, compression for virtual reality, super resolution, anything that has to do with GANs, anything that's generative in, in nature, and then generating videos. And, and the most important takeaway is that transformers pretty much own the future of machine learning because of their generalizability. And because of that, they're definitely a step towards the artificial general intelligence that we're after.